Hi, welcome back to my channel, Lady and the Drink. This week, as promised, we're going to be creating another drink based on the gentian liqueur cellar. Let's go. So this week, we're going to be making a variation on the martini. It's called William Elliott's Martini Variation, and it comes from a bar called Maison Premier in Brooklyn. So as far as the ingredients go, we're going to be using one and three quarters of an ounce of dry gin, three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth, half an ounce of salaire, a quarter of an ounce of creme de cassis, and three drops of rose water. This isn't really like the things I normally make most of the time. I choose things that are very simple with maybe three, maximum four ingredients. But I thought let's change things up a little bit and see how this comes out. It's very intriguing to me, this combination of ingredients. Highly unusual, especially in a martini, so I can't wait to give it a go. Just a few notes as far as the ingredients go. Rose water, I usually buy at you know, like an Indian supermarket. I know that they often also have it in Persian markets too. Um, creme de cassis is a black currant liqueur. It's what you would get in a Kir or a Kir Royale if you've ever had those when you've been in France. Again, fairly easy to get hold of at your local wine shop or like specialty spirits store, I would say. The Salaire, again, here I'm using this in place of Aves, which is another gentian-based liqueur, but this is the one that I have, so I'm gonna give it a go with this. I know this is slightly less viscous and a bit drier than Aves, but I'm sure it'll work out pretty good here. No one wants their martini too sweet anyway. And dry vermouth, um, same as ever with my vermouth lecture, keep it in the fridge and use it quick. Okay, let's get started. So, um, we're gonna be building this in a mixing glass. So let me just shift things around on here. I'm just using three regular cubes of ice today. Use whatever you want, big, small, just not anything like crushed ice, that's not gonna work. So, one and three quarters of an ounce of dry gin. That is a hefty pour, but you have to remember we are making a variation on a martini here, so gin is always gonna be the largest component. Don't even think about telling me, oh, but Alex, you could have a vodka martini. No, you can't. That's just Martinis are definitely supposed to be gin. Three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth. There we go. Now I'm very intrigued because this is a strange lineup. I've never heard of rose water being in a martini before or creme de cassis for that matter. Half an ounce of the salaire. As you'll notice, it's quite easy to remember the quantities because it just sort of gradually decreases as we go down the line. And a quarter of an ounce of creme de cassis. It's funny actually, this is I think the first alcohol that I ever sort of drank being naughty. I found it in my parents' alcohol cabinet when I was teenager and I thought oh you know they never use this I'll never notice if this goes missing and poured myself like a big beaker full of it yeah it is definitely not something to be drunk in those quantities okay so the rose water it said three drops so I'm just gonna pour some into the cap and then try my best but I do find in general people are very stingy with like rose and orange blossom water and Ultimately, it's really not the end of the world if you use a little bit more. I think that the, the flavor is not so overpowering that it's gonna ruin your creation. One, two, three. Well, I'll say that's okay. God, it smells amazing. I love this stuff. If you've never used it before, I would definitely recommend putting it in anything where you've got like strawberries or raspberries. It really brings out the flavor. So we're gonna stir this, and as I have said before, we're gonna stir for 15 to 20 seconds, which is very hard to count when you're talking, but you want to wait till the outside of the mixing glass is kind of getting a little bit chilled down and frosty, and then you'll know that it should be done. And I think, I don't think he specifies a garnish in the recipe, but I have this big juicy lemon, so I thought, why not? We'll have a lemon garnish. This is also totally different color-wise compared to any normal martini, obviously because of the creme de cassis, it's pink. 
Okay, I think we're gonna call that a day. So, I'm using a Nicanora, you can use whatever your preferred vessel is. Oh, that looks pretty luscious. The color is beautiful. And because you've not shaken it, I would usually say if you're using something like this, you really should shake it, but because you're stirring it, it's so clear and none of this, you know, none of the sort of muddliness, not muddliness, what's the word I'm looking for? Cloudiness that you get when you um, shake something. All right, so I'm just going for a lemon peel and I feel like this is a fancy cocktail, so I'm gonna tidy it up. So I've just cut it into a rectangle. And hmm, what do we fancy today? What kind of, I think maybe just bent over the edge might be nice. So I'm just gonna sort of bend it. Be careful because it will kind of snap. And I'm just gonna, yeah, that's elegant. We'll go with that. All right, let's give it a try. That is beautiful, really spectacular. I can just imagine if you had people around you, so I'm trying out this new martini and you brought this out, they'd be like, what is that? It's pink. It smells, you know, I like the lemon peel on there because I feel like it kind of contrasts with the sweetness that you're getting on the nose from the creme de cassis. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Wow. That is different. I'm kind of lost for words. Better go in for a second taste. That is very, very unusual. You've got the, the kick coming in from the sheer amount of gin in there, which is tempered slightly and given some sort of botanical layers, softer botanical layers from the vermouth. And then this is coming in and kind of almost mellowing it a little bit further and adding a kind of earthier note, but very mildly earthy. And then the combination of these two, like I said, how putting rose water in anything with berries really enhances the berry flavor. It's not an overly floral martini at all, but it's just a little bit fruity, but not in a sweet way. It still comes across on the palate as a dry drink. I am in shock. That is completely different from anything I've ever tried. And I, I've tried a fair amount, so I would, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have another sip, or at least another sniff. Yeah, that is, that is really something else. Definitely give that a go if you, can get your hands on this crazy assortment of ingredients. But hopefully the fact that I'm gonna be making three different cocktails of the salad just shows you that you can really incorporate it into things like the martini or like we did last week, the aviation that you would normally use other things in. Um, it's not gonna be one of those bottles that just kind of goes off at the back of your alcohol cabinet. So cheers to this beautiful, elegant pink martini and I will see you next week for another Salaire cocktail. This time we're gonna be really changing things up. You'll see what I mean next week. I will keep the suspense going for that. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons below if you did indeed like this video and want to see more, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.